Okay, I've been trying to intro this video for like 10 minutes and I keep stuffing my words up. So I'm going to read directly from the JHS website. And this is what it says. The JHS Pedals 3 Series is a collection of pedals designed to give you affordability and simplicity without compromising quality. For whatever reason, I couldn't formulate my own words to communicate that. So that's what the 3 Series are all about. The 3 Series were announced and released uh, towards the end of 2020, and that's the whole point. There were eight pedals released. There was a fuzz, an overdrive, a distortion, a delay, a reverb, a chorus, a compressor, and a phaser. And each of these pedals cost 99 US dollars, all made in the USA. The pedals themselves are really simple in terms of um, the design, the visual, and the enclosures. They're all the same. They're all just white with three knobs and a switch. You've probably seen them before. But as we've kind of come to know with um, pedal releases, guitar releases, amp releases, anything really, even the tech world, um, these companies tend to send this equipment out to like every YouTuber known to man, and all of the videos get released on the same day. And we kind of get bombarded with um, this new product. And the, the same same thing kind of happened with the JHS series is that there was a lot of hype surrounding it and um, I kind of wanted to have a look at these pedals about a year and a half after the release. Since the, the launch of the pedals they've also released a hall reverb, a flanger and just recently a screamer which is based on a tube screamer um, and it kind of got me thinking when the screamer came out how are these pedals going? I don't have any sort of analytics to you know how, how successful they are but I bought two of them at release um, and I've currently got a third with me. So I thought, let's take a look at three of these pedals and we can kind of judge, I guess, the rest of them from these three because I'm guessing the quality is going to be kind of pretty good across the board and pretty similar to the ones I have here. But the main point of this video today is to kind of ask the question and hopefully answer the question, despite all the hype from about a year and a half ago, are these pedals any good? Are they worth it? The thing I'm kind of thinking is, are they boutique quality pedals at a lower price or are they an affordable pedal made in the USA so are they like pretty good, but they're made here and so they're a bit more expensive or are they like actually great and are able to cut costs and get, get it to you, you know, at a cheaper price? Do they compete with JHS other pedals and with other boutique guitar pedal makers or do they compete more with the Mua stuff and the Nuex stuff and things like that, but at a higher price point? We're gonna ask that question today. We're gonna also take a bit of a deep dive into these three pedals that I have with me today. I've got the Fuzz with me today, so three series Fuzz. Um, also got the compressor, uh, nice and simple, and then the overdrive. So as you can see, wide enclosures, really, really simple. Um, they all have three knobs and a switch. They all look the same. Um, and, th and the rest of the line is the same. So the other eight that they've released all look exactly the same. So yeah, let's have a little look. Uh, towards the end of this video, after I kind of do the actual playing and, and demonstrating of the pedals, I will give my thoughts and I will answer the question to the best of my ability. Are these pedals worth it? Should you spend your money on them? Or should you kind of push for something more expensive? Or should you save money and go cheaper? Like they're in this little middle ground and I kind of want to work out, is it a good middle ground or is it a kind of like a, mm, go up or go down sort of situation, if that makes any sense. So stick around until the end of the video for my thoughts on the question. Are the JHS 3 Series pedals worth it a year and a half after the launch? Okay, so as you can see, we have uh, the compressor, the fuzz, and the overdrive from uh, the JHS 3 Series collection of pedals. Um, really quickly, just to go through my signal chain for this video, I'm using my Mexican Player Series Stratocaster into a Polytune Mini 3, and then into the compressor, the fuzz, and the overdrive from JHS 3 Series. Uh, and from there, I go into the Strymon Iridium, which is set to the round amp, the deluxe reverb, and also Cab C, it's just all stock. From there, I go into my Universal Audio Apollo Twin X, and any reverb that you hear in this video will be done in post. So I'm gonna start with the compressor, then go to the fuzz, then go to the overdrive, and just sort of work my way through the pedals uh, and show you, I guess, what they sound like, how I like to use them, and how you can use them in different ways, um, subtly or really extreme or whatever. Uh, we're just kinda gonna go through fairly quickly because I don't want this video to take too long. So this is my dry, unaffected signal, so purely running into the Strymon Iridium, and that's it. <laughs> Okay, set, I guess, slightly on the edge of breakup, but fairly clean. Um, all right, let's engage the JHS 3 Series compressor and have a listen to what it does. Probably the first thing you'll notice is that there is an increase in level. 
Um, but I don't know if you can hear it already, but definitely from playing the Strat and it being here playing the guitar, uh, is definitely um, less dynamic range when you play, but it kind of feels nice at the same time. Um, so we've got volume, attack and sustain, and then a bright switch. Volume does what you'd think volume would do, which is more or less volume. Attack goes from fast attack to a slow attack. Fast is all the way to the left, slow is all the way to the right, and you know anywhere in between. And then the sustain is kind of the amount of compression, or obviously the sustain that you get because of that compression. Um, if you don't know how compressors work, I'm not going to go into that, but there are plenty of awesome videos um, talking about how compressors work, so I'd definitely recommend you go and checking some of those out on YouTube. Um, but for now, let's have a little play with the controls. Firstly, I'm going to start off by kind of getting the pedal to more or less unity gain, so we're not hearing a, a massive volume boost, because automatically we're going to think that's sounds better um, so we're going to kind of get it dialed into where it's fairly uh, neutral I guess so let's go without so I think that's that's pretty close let's have a look at the attack control So you can probably hear straight away that when I turn the attack control all the way to the left, uh, we're getting a faster attack, which means my initial note, the initial transient, the initial attack that you're hearing from the guitar is kind of squashed like immediately. So it's not really letting that initial transient through. Um, I'll play without and then with and you can have a listen. It just squishes it straight away. So that's a bit quick for how I like it. So let's back it off just a little bit. So it's a bit, uh, a little bit slower. So I think that initial transit's kind of coming through a bit more there. Uh, and then let's turn the sustain up and see what we get when we have more sustain. If we go for a super compressed sound, we'll go for a bit of a faster attack. Um, I'm going to increase the volume because when you start turning the sustain up and getting more compression, it's squishing down the loud notes and actually kind of comes across a little bit quieter. So if I go before and after with this, you should hear. So yeah, that's super cool. It, it, compressors are often used um, for funk situations and things like that, especially at these kind of settings, these kind of extreme settings. And this JHS3 series compressor definitely goes, you know, kind of spanky and, and, and super compressed, which is really, really cool. Um, and there's also a bright switch. So if I go without the bright switch and then add it in, it's, uh, it's brighter. For the Strat though, I'm going to keep it off. Um, I guess sometimes if you're using humbuckers or something like that, it might be nice to have a little bit uh, of extra brightness in case the compressor kind of takes some of that top end off. So I guess that's a handy feature to have on this compressor. Um, I'm going to show you, I guess, my favorite setting to use on the compressor. And it's sort of an always on thing. I don't use always on all the time. Um, depends on the guitar I'm using. When I'm using my Strat, I kind of like having a compressor always on. And these are the settings that I'll go for. something like that. So all it's really doing is giving me a slight kind of volume boost, pushing the Iridium a little, little bit harder. Um, and it's just sort of evening out my dynamic range just a little bit. Like it's subtle. The attack, as you can see, is pretty far to the right, which is quite slow. And the sustain is under halfway. Not a whole lot of sustain, not a whole lot of compression. Um, I'll show you without the pedal. <laughs> So that's kind of where I like to have it set for an always on thing with the Strat. If I'm not using uh, the Strat and I'm not dialing in a specific compressed tone either for funk or for slide, um, I do like to have it actually set as, as a boost and it makes a really, really nice clean boost. Um, and I'll show you how to do that now. So if we crank the volume all the way up and then have attack as slow as possible and sustain as low as possible, um, really we're kind of getting no compression. Um, 
or probably getting a little bit. I'm not exactly sure how the circuit works, but to my ears, it's not really compressing. It's just pushing and adding more volume, which is which is kind of cool. So I'll show you what that does with a sort of edge of breakup tone that I've got set up. Obviously, without the compressor, we've got this. Switch it on. So it's just a nice kind of full range boost. Uh, a lot of boost pedals and overdrive pedals will maybe shave off high end or low end or add a mid bump or, or whatever and have kind of an EQ to them, which is fantastic. Um, but this compressor kind of gives you a really usable, clean boost, which I feel like is, is kind of flat in terms of EQ, which is really cool. And as you heard, that took me from an edge of breakup thing to proper, you know, dirt breaking up. If you have a super, super clean amp, this will just give you more volume, which is really cool. Or if you have it going into an overdrive or something, it'll just give you more gain, maybe a little bit more level. But that's just another kind of cool way that you can use the JHS 3 Series compressor. Um, let's move on to the fuzz now. So just like the compressor, the fuzz has three controls and a switch. We've got volume, bias, fuzz, and a fat switch. Volume obviously is going to do what you think, which is going to give us more or less volume. Um, fuzz is pretty obvious too, more or less fuzz. The fat switch, I will hear, kind of warms things up a little bit, makes things a little bit fatter, as you would expect. And the bias is cool. It's kind of a gated thing, and you'll hear that it, we can kind of go from um, it's more of a smooth thing all the way to the left to like super gated and, and gritty and kind of Velcro-y um, all the way to the right which is really, really rad. So I'll show you what this sounds like just with all the knobs where they are just facing up. So this is the clean tone. Um, what I've noticed from mucking around with this pedal is that similar to a lot of fuzz circuits and designs, again, not all, probably not all, but a lot of them, um, the fuzz all the way up is sort of where it sounds the best. Uh, and so I'm going to just do that. I'm going to crank the fuzz all the way up. Um, and what I'm gonna do is actually start with the bias all the way down. So this will give us sort of no gating and it should be kind of as smooth as we can get from this pedal anyway. So this is what it sounds like. That's pretty sick. I like that. What I'll do now is I'll kind of just slowly increase the bias so you can hear what that is doing. So it's 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 kind of gating uh, and getting that kind of cool Velcro-y gated fuzz sound. Um, and you can kind of hear that obviously when it gates, um, the noise kind of goes away too. So if you have a listen as I uh, decrease the bias, you'll hear the kind of the noise comes back in because the gate isn't as strong anymore. So you can hear there, it's just over half. With my guitar volume up. Yeah, you can hear that now kind of goes away. So you can kind of use this pedal as a fuzz that um, sort of doesn't have a heck of a lot of noise when you stop playing, which is kind of cool because fuzzes often have a whole lot of noise, uh, which is, you know, part of it, but this is kind of cool. <laughs> I personally like it backed off a little bit um, just to kind of get the smoothness back in. <laughs> And then finally, the fat switch. So let's hear what that does.
it obviously makes things a bit fatter and a bit woolier and a bit warmer, um, but it kind of affects the the bias and the gate a little bit too, because obviously the frequencies are going to be a little bit different, so things kind of change, um, which is really, really rad. But yeah, that's the fuzz pedal. Let's move on to the overdrive. This is, again, three knobs and a switch. Um, super simple. I don't know what this is based on, but let's have a listen to what it sounds like. Uh, this is the bypass signal. Let's switch it on. So it's kind of bright, which you can probably hear straight away. Let's quickly talk about the controls. We've got a volume, we've got a body, a drive, and a gain switch. Um, the volume changes the volume, the drive increases or decreases the amount of drive, super simple. The body is basically a tone control, um, brighter as it goes up, warmer as it goes down. Uh, and then the gain switch, as far as I'm concerned, isn't purely a gain boost or more gain, but actually kind of changes uh, the character of the drive a little bit. It might add gain depending on where you are, and it also might sort of change the amount of compression you're getting um, and just sort of change the character of the drive a little bit. So we'll have a little play with that. I'm going to start off with the body kind of almost all the way off because I actually find to get this pedal as close as I can to kind of unity in terms of EQ, uh, as transparent, I guess, as I can, uh, that is having the body sort of like that, um, and then we'll turn the drive pretty low, and let's have a listen to where we are. <laughs> If you're listening on headphones or any kind of decent monitors, you can probably hear that it's actually kind of taking away quite a bit of bottom end. And that's kind of the first thing I noticed with this pedal when I got it is that I like the character of the drive. I, I quite like the sound of the pedal, um, but it cuts a lot of bass. And uh, for most of, you know, the applications that I'm using drive for, I don't really want that. Um, but then when I kind of went and played uh, a gig with the band, um, I used it to kind of push and get me above you know, above the mix in a solo and it was absolutely perfect because it shaved off that bottom end and really kind of just revealed what was there in the, in the, the mids and the high mids and the, and the top end, I guess, um, which really kind of actually helped me push out of the mix a little bit. So it's definitely a drive that, you know, if you, if you want that, it's fantastic for it. And if you don't want that, then it might not be for you. Um, but let's have a little look at the drive and see what happens when we turn it up and turn it down. <laughs> So there's a good amount of gain on tap. Um, that's pretty cool. I'm going to bring it a bit back down to half and let's have a listen to what the gain switch is doing. I guess in most instances it felt like it was 
making the pedal louder and, and adding a bit more gain. It's definitely something you can feel under the fingers as well um, with that switch. I probably should have done more research on what it does, but hey, all good. Um, and then let's have a quick look at the body. So let's go gain switch back to where it was. Let's start off with the pedal disengaged. <laughs> Makes it brighter as it goes up. Um, let's bring that back down to kind of where it was. And let's have one little look at what the volume is doing. That sounds quite nice actually. The drive all the way to the left with the body almost all the way to the left and the volume all the way up. Uh, it's quite a nice, I guess, transparency type thing. So that overdrive, it might cut a little bit of bass, which I don't really love, but um, it, on a setting like that, it was actually really nice. And like I was saying before, as a pedal that kind of pushes you out above a mix in, in front of a band a little bit and kind of shaves off a little bit of low end, it's actually a really, really helpful tool and a really useful thing to have on your board. But yeah, that is essentially what the JHS 3 Series Overdrive sounds like. So are the JHS 3 Series pedals worth your time, worth your money? Whereabouts do they sit in the market? Should you wait, save a little bit more money and get something a little bit more expensive if you're looking for an overdrive or a compressor or a chorus? Or should you kind of go down a little bit and get sort of a Chinese made pedal um, for even cheaper than 99 US dollars? That's the question. As you just heard, I think the pedals sound really good. Um, I genuinely think so. I mean, the construction, um, they're solid. They're, they're really, really well built. Yeah, they're simple and they're able to kind of save money uh, in terms of the design. Um, and I actually think it's kind of a cool opportunity to kind of decorate the pedals yourselves. You can kind of paint it and you know, do whatever you do whatever you want with them, which is kind of cool. Um, but because they're all the same, because all the enclosures are the same, they're able to do them cheaper. I personally don't think that the sound quality is less because the price is less. I do think it's because they're able to kind of bang them out with the same enclosures and not have to worry about artworks and, and the design and all that sort of stuff. But in terms of quality of build and construction and sound quality, I think these pedals rank you know, amongst JHS's other stuff, which ranks amongst everything else really in the market. Obviously all these pedals are simple and that's kind of a, a big thing to understand. You're not looking at all these interesting, crazy algorithms for reverbs and different clipping options for overdrives and things like that. You kind of want an overdrive pedal and you don't want to spend too much money, but you don't want to get something super cheap. You grab the overdrive. You want to kind of dip your toes into fuzz, get a fuzz. You just need a simple slapback delay, get the delay. I think that's the coolest part about the JHS 3 Series line of guitar effects pedals for me is that if you're not sure what you like, if you want to experiment with flanger, you want to experiment with compression, you get one of these. That's kind of what I did. I, I'd used compressors before, but I kind of wanted to just see like, is a compressor really something for me? Do I like compression? Am I going to use it on my board? Rather than spending, you know, 600 bucks or whatever it is on some hectic origin effects compressor, which, you know, I, I know they're probably amazing. I thought, why don't I spend 99 US bucks on the compressor? And at the end of the day, if I don't like it, I can sell it. Um, if I do like it, I've got a good sounding pedal that didn't cost me that much money. Um, and I've, I've sort of hung on to the compressor and the overdrive. Uh, the fuzz, unfortunately, isn't mine. That'll be going back to a friend. But I think all in all, um, these pedals have a place in the market. If you don't want to get something, you know, made in China that, you know, is lesser quality build construction like Mua and Nuex and things like that, but you don't want to spend two, three hundred, four hundred dollars on more boutique guitar effects pedals, but you still want the sound quality, um, or you're experimenting with what effects you like and what effects you don't like, the JHS 3 Series are sick. Um, I really highly recommend them. I think, you know, they're all going to have their own thing. And for me, the overdrive, as I mentioned before, it kind of feels like it cuts bass a little bit. And so I don't use it as much. Uh, the compressor I have on my board all the time. And I either use it as an always on compressor for my Strat um, or as a really nice boost as you saw. And I think the fuzz is really cool too. Like I'm hopefully gonna be hanging onto this for a little bit longer um, until my friend asks for it back. Cause I think it sounds great. So are they worth it? Yes, do they have a place in the market? I really think they do. Um, I obviously haven't tried the other ones 
and I don't have them and I can't demo them, unfortunately. But I'm kind of assuming that if these are at this quality, the other ones are going to be at that kind of level of quality as well. Do you have JHS 3 Series pedals on your board? Let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to know. Um, are these pedals that you think are worth it? Are they a waste of money? I want to know your thoughts in the comments, so please uh, let me know. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm trying to build this channel up, post more videos. You liking and subscribing uh, and even hitting that bell is important and really helps. Um, so yeah, go ahead and do that if you're keen. And uh, that'll probably wrap it up for today. I'll see you guys in the next one.